Da da dit, da da da, da da da, da did it. Did it da, did da, did da, da di? Did it da 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 di, da da di. Which is quite enough of dat, and more about it later on. Da da dit, da da da, da da da, da did it, etc., etc. What we were trying to say at the beginning of the program was good evening in Morse and get this machine to print it out. Well, as you will have gathered, our Morse uh, is a bit rusty, but now watch this because Chris Nababi here, who helped design and build this machine, is a bit of an expert. First of all, he gives the machine the command to switch on. There you are, dictated in Morse and printed out in plain language. In fact, this is a small computer, and as you heard, it works on a slightly modified Morse code. Now, this board here is the analog part of the computer. It separates out the dars from the dits, measures the time interval between them in order to determine the end of each letter group. And this, it converts into an electronic signal. The signal is amplified here on this board and then passed simultaneously to these four boards here. There are 64 variations of dots and dashes that are being used in this particular code and on these panels there are 64 electronic gates. Each gate will open when it's given the right signal and then this allows an electronic pulse through to the appropriate part of the typewriter, be that a space key or a letter or whatever. Now, I'll try it on this microphone myself. He switched it on. A in Morse is didar, as you know. Dida, dida, dida. Very successful. Now, you may think that that is um, a very slow way to type a letter, but consider the case of the totally paralyzed person, for instance, who hereby could take care of letter writing himself. The sensitivity of these controls here is perhaps deceptively simple. Once the machine is set up, it needs no further adjustment, and as you could see, it can cope with both Mr. Namavi's voice and my own. What's more, you don't have just to use it as a typewriter. In fact, it can be made to do anything which is normally done with a switch. You could switch on a light, switch on an electric fan, change uh, channels on a television set, if you like. And we have set it up here to operate a telephone. Now, here we have uh, a normal uh, telephone in the television center system. Here we have a loudspeaker which bypasses the normal handset. I'm going to ask Mr. Nabavi First of all, to give the machine the order to get the typewriter out and the telephone in circuit. There we go. Now, will you dial extension 4200? <laughs> Hello? Who that? Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> well, you got the right number because you, James, you got James Burke. Ring him off. Ring did him. it, uh, did it. This is, in fact, the first prototype, and it uh, goes on show for the first time next week at the physics exhibition at Alexandra Palace. The decision whether or not to market it has not yet been made, but if it is made, the makers reckon that the electronic side of it will cost about £200. But the important thing about it is that this is one more step towards controlling machinery simply by talking to it. Thank you very much, Mr Nabavi. <laughs>